If you visit any Christian church in Kampong Chenang, there are a couple of things that you will notice. First of all, there are lots of kids. Next, you'll be welcomed like family. And third, one way or another, they all seem to be aware that Jesus offers new light. For instance, if you go to New Vision, Brackvuthi's church, you'll notice that the front wall is draped in black. But right in the middle is the cross, forming sort of a doorway into light. Most Cambodians live in great fear. Coming to Christ means walking out of the darkness into the light, into a new life. Cambodia has over 11,000 villages. Kampong Chenang province alone has 560 of, of which 439 have no active Christian fellowship of any sort. Pastors know the desperate darkness that their neighbors live in. Many of them lived in that darkness themselves. Most, if not all, pastors also have one or more fellowships that they help to support. Now, you're about ready to see a day in the life of Prakvuthi as he goes out with his wife and a couple of his elders and, and go into a village that he's been working in for two years. And seeing what's happening here will help you to understand why the local pastors of Kampong Chinang are deeply involved in joint training. Once a month, Vuthi heads down the river to a fishing village. Other pastors hop on their bicycles or motos and they head out. When Vuthi arrives, the village has already begun to gather. He begins with the children. Children love to be active. <laughs> And parents love those who love their kids. They love the story of Zacchaeus. And the children are dismissed, and it's time for the adults and the servant. Today, a young man gave his testimony. His wife and his children were sick. They had given their money to the soothsayers and monks who promised to pray for them, but they were still sick. Then, in desperation, they prayed to Vuthi's Jesus. They all felt a sense of, of release, of a weight being lifted. And before long, they were all well again. Hearing this testimony, a young couple invited us to come and dedicate them and their house to Jesus. We filled it with the light of Christ's love and the joy of salvation. In joy, the father of the house went outside and destroyed his spirit house. We were then invited to another household where the daughter wanted her mother to become a Christian. We did the same with words of kindness and of peace, with prayer for protection and filling. This woman's mother came to accept Jesus as her Lord. She removed her good luck charm and got rid of the idols and altar out of her house. We left, throwing the idols into the river. Now we leave these new believers in the care of a young Christian who has been a Christian for about a year and a half. But their leader, who will do his absolute best to love them with Christ's love and uphold them with prayer is painfully aware of his shortcomings. He wants to know. He hungers for the support and fellowship of others doing the same in their villages. This story is repeated weekly in a hundred places in this province alone.